Today in Chicago, a construction worker was killed when the aerial device he was operating collapsed. The worker was moving the lift with the boom elevated when the right side wheel struck a curb. This caused the lift to become unstable and topple over. The operator was not wearing the required fall protection and was thrown from the platform. Experts say a proper work area hazard inspection could have identified the stability hazard and prevented the accident. They also note that the fall protection is required for anyone performing work on an aerial device. A memorial service is being held on Friday. Types of aerial lift users Occupants work on aerial lift platforms, but do not operate the vehicle. Occupants must be trained how to work safely on the platform, and how to operate the vehicle in an emergency. An operator is a person who is qualified to control the movement of a mobile elevated work platform. Operators must be trained on inspection, application, use, maintenance, and operation of the aerial lift. A supervisor monitors operator performance and supervises the work. Supervisors must be trained on work platform selection, rules and regulations, hazards and protection methods, and the importance of having the operator's manual on the vehicle. The employer must evaluate the job requirements and work site conditions to determine which type of aerial lift will safely accomplish the task. It is important to select the correct vehicle so employees can accomplish their work without having to push the limits of the vehicle. The selection process should consider required elevation. How high does the worker need to reach? How close does the operator need to be to the work? Horizontal outreach. What is the required horizontal outreach? What is the height of the object that needs to be reached over to access the work? Are there any obstacles on the ground that limit the position of the vehicle? Required capacity. How many people need to be lifted? What is required to be on the platform in addition to personnel? What is the maximum expected load of people, tools, and equipment? Support and driving conditions. What are the ground conditions on the job site? What terrain will the machine be traveling and elevating on? Will the ground hold the weight of the vehicle? Are there any tunnels or chambers beneath the support surface? What is the slope and condition of the support surface? Hazardous atmospheres. Has a qualified person determined if any atmospheric hazards exist? Are the vehicles rated for this hazard? Have employees been trained on the hazards and provided proper equipment? Indoor work areas. Is buildup of vehicle emissions a concern? Is there enough lighting? Are there any obstacles that need to be maneuvered around? Will the floor support the load? What other work is going on in the area? Access to the work area. How will the vehicle be delivered? What is the access point? Are there any obstacles, such as stairs or ramps, that need to be maneuvered around? Are there pedestrian or vehicle traffic hazards? Will the vehicle be moved while in an elevated position? The employer will consider the hazards and circumstances of the work area and select the mobile elevated work platform best suited for these conditions. 